into this field of loving kindness. Recognizing that simply by choosing to be here, you're practicing loving kindness towards yourself, giving yourself the opportunity to just gently relax and quiet in the mind and set the body at ease. And as many of you know, some of you anyway, <laughs> we just finished a two weeks retreat with Ajahn Brahm. It was actually many, many different cities and talks and little retreats along the way. And so there was this sense of the power of community and the energy that gets generated when so many people come together to learn the Dhamma and to develop wholesome states. And really people start working together almost like one entity, similar to that um, beautiful sutta, Majjhima Nikaya, it's in the Upakilesa Sutta, and, uh, which is the other one. There's two suttas which talk about Kimbala, Anuruddha and Nandia living together like milk and water viewing each other with kindly eyes and doing whatever's needed to put everyone else at ease. And so forging this beautiful sense of harmony and supportive conditions for deep practice. And in a similar way, our community is beginning to operate just like that. Many people, but pulling together as one. And that's something very beautiful to witness. So. Hopefully you can feel a part of that right now, even with your eyes closed. Sensing the people around you, for me in the room here and also on Zoom. For you on Zoom and perhaps even in your house, people who are giving you the opportunity for some quiet, for some solitude. Supporting you in your practice today. Hopefully even the pops have settled down for shell. <laughs> and just beginning by connecting with your body. So here it's a lovely sunny morning. So I'm imagining the sunlight coming in through the curtains. In a similar way, the awareness starts to shine into your body, illuminating any sensations that you're experiencing there right now, from the top of the head, all the way down the body, through each cell, flowing down, illuminating all these little sensations that we often don't take care to experience. And at the same time, as the sunshine carries warmth, this awareness carries kindness, taking that kindness through to every part of your body. Without visualizing the body, but just moving into the feeling part of the mind to experience the body through touch. Noticing that when your awareness coupled with kindness, this kindfulness, wherever it reaches, you become aware of something happening in that part. And you know it's kindness when that sensation starts to settle down or soften a little bit effortlessly without trying to change anything but simply opening your heart your mind to whatever you're experiencing now
just letting the awareness flow as effortlessly as the sun shining through every cell of your body you're just receiving that glow relaxing basking in the sunshine giving any tightness or tension permission to relax to unravel release and let go And perhaps if you do notice tightness or tension in any part of the body, just expanding your awareness in that area. So giving those feelings space to be. Just this much can help unravel the knots that you may have in your shoulders or maybe butterflies in your tummy, give them space. So much space around you in this room, you can widen your awareness to include it all. Your knees, checking if they're placed kindly on your mat or your chair or if you could loosen them up a little bit by giving them more space. So it's okay to make adjustments at this point in the practice. So your body can trust that it's in the friendly presence of a mind that will not control but that genuinely cares and tends to each sensation, to each body part, to each state of mind. Now imagining that this warmth and light of the sun carries with it beautiful loving kindness. Perhaps the kindness you experience in the presence of a teacher or a very close dear friend maybe a spiritual friend on the path. And really allowing yourself to soak up that kindness, to soak up their goodwill, their benevolence, their lack of agenda, that sense of accepting you just as you are. And this person wishes you genuine happiness, safety and ease. Perhaps you can imagine them 
conveying these thoughts, these wishes to you. And you're picking up those blessings. Perhaps using words, perhaps wordlessly, just through their energy, their goodwill. If you wish, you can experiment by articulating those wishes toward yourself. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be truly contented. May I be deeply at ease. <clears throat> Using words or sentiments that mean something to you. And pausing. listening in the space between each phrase to allow the mind to soak in that goodwill to gently open to the feelings the emotions of loving kindness Remembering this metta is not only coming from you, but from someone who deeply cares. Staying connected with your body, allowing it to relax more and more deeply as the whole body and mind is suffused by loving kindness. And you just receive.
And as this loving kindness grows, it may be that you wish to share this feeling, this well wishing with those around you. particularly those who are sitting in the room right now where I am and all of those of us here. People from across the world that sitting together, basking in this loving kindness. sharing it with one another and noticing how it grows. How we receive even more through the act of sharing, giving that loving kindness away freely. Imagining a golden light coming into this virtual Zoom room, this Vihara room. Or perhaps a soft energy like a very fine fluffy cloud. Like cotton wool. Whether you have a lot to share or you just wish to receive, it's the same. You don't have to do anything right now. Just let that matter flow into you, around you. And outwards as far as it goes. <clears throat> May we all be happy. May we be free. May we be safe. May we be at peace.
And from this place of safety, surrounded by spiritual friends, it's as though you're seated in a medium sized pagoda, a beautiful empty space, a dome reaching up to the sky. And there are entrances on four sides through which other beings can enter and come in to receive, to share, to contribute to this loving kindness that we're developing inside. So invite in beings from the north, from the south, the east and the west. Friendly beings. You imagine sitting down and joining this beautiful meta meditation, soaking up some of the peace. as this loving kindness spreads to encompass these beings who've entered into the space, the metta becomes more intense, more concentrated. boundless until it's expanding pushing out the walls glowing and attracting more and more beings all kinds of beings who get attracted to this metta beings who are suffering anxious or afraid they too start entering as this pagoda expands and grows to encompass thousands of living beings And the metta flows from the center of this pagoda, from you surrounded by your spiritual friends, outwards, reaching the corners, the edges, the whole globe.
like a beautiful, radiant, protective light, a force field of goodness, soothing the anger, the suffering, even sickness and death. Protecting those who are being born and those who are about to die. All beings, whatever they're going through right now, are included in this huge, vast, boundless field of metta, of loving kindness. And a great peace and unity is now spread throughout the globe and you're part of this. Connected through your own humanity to the humanity of all other beings. Not only human beings but also the animals insects and birds
creatures in the rivers and the seas. Delighting together in harmlessness. Relaxing into the peace. Diverse in body, but one in mind. No more conflict, no more war. Nothing to be afraid of. A feeling of trust and total ease. All beings united in their search for happiness and wish for freedom from suffering. Just sitting together as one. How does that feel?
gradually remaining connected to the sense of all beings all beings as your friend gradually coming back into your room into your body and mind noticing sensations on your skin maybe tingling coolness lightness Maybe some tension still remains. It's bringing those beautiful attitudes of loving kindness to whatever you experience in your body, in your mind. Regarding them too as a friend. And just soaking up the meta that is in this virtual Zoom room. Allowing yourself once more to receive. To accept those parts of you that you often reject. And so cop the blessings that I'll share to end the meditation. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Atabawa Pariapana Sabe Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anaviya Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Wini Padika Awe Hon Tu Abia Paja Hon Tu Aniga Hon Tu Sikiatanam Pavi 
duka munjante ya dala da sampadito mawe gajante kamasaka You can, if you wish, do three big sadhus if you need to wake up <laughs> gently to go back to your day. Or you can continue if you wish. That's the beauty of Zoom. So take your time. In the meantime, I shall do the sadhus for those who wish. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> so you have to do that or it's not the real thing it's the hahayana thing <laughs> so it's nice to end with a smile i like ending meta meditation because normally you get some pretty smiles looking back at you it's very nice but still still this is just a training there's no um particular desired goal other than to incline our mind in that direction so um, we do have a few minutes if anyone has feedback questions complaints <laughs> Ajahn Brown calls that the three C's questions comments and complaints bit of a stretch because it's anyway <laughs> question question um, so yeah I'd love to hear how that was for you you can write in the chat or you can unmute Raise your hand and I'll, I'll unmute you. Um, so, someone's asking the meaning of the blessing at the end. Uh, so, it's basically um, may all beings be free from suffering, may they be happy, may they be well. Um, and it goes through the different categories of beings. So, subbe sata is like all beings, subbe pana, all breathing beings. Sabe Bhuta, again, all living beings. Sabe Pugala, all human beings. Sabe Anupadika, not sure. Anupadika, no feet, possibly. Pada is feet. Anupadika, not sure. It might be those with feet or those without feet. Sabe uh, Arya, those who are noble ones, those who are not noble ones. It just basically covers all categories, women, men. I mean, it's basically meant to be completely inclusive, so nobody's left out. So that's what it means. It's very beautiful, and it's something that um, my Burmese teacher used to chant every morning before going on arms round into the village. So he'd chant that at the beginning, and then they'd start to walk. Uh, so it's very beautiful, harmlessness. Hard, it's hard to receive kindness. How do we overcome that resistance? Yeah. Be kind to the resistance. <laughs> Just welcome and accept the resistance with an attitude of curiosity. Because metta is also a practice of learning what blocks us. It's, it's actually uh, a practice that directly helps pacify or... or um, uh, dissolve ill will and resistance is a kind of not wanting a kind of uh, barrier that we erect in our mind towards our own happiness sometimes it's so ironic isn't it but it's conditioned so it's quite natural to have that especially if we don't think we're good enough um, so we can learn about our mind we can learn about where those obstacles are and learn to be patient with them so really it's about the continued practice, you know, allowing ourselves to accept ourselves as we are. And that includes with our resistance, with our irritations, with our, you know, idiosyncrasies, our little, our moods, or our tendencies. Metta is an all-embracing attitude. And um, as we, I sort of hinted at the end, it's not only about accepting other beings, but accepting other mind states, because once we can give space to our own inner world, to our own emotional world, we can hold space for others too when they're angry or frightened or resisting your kindness. Um, intellectually, or maybe to some extent relationally, I've learned that it's kind to receive kindness and to receive the kindness of others. 
One example of that was when I tried to give some feedback to a, a friend and they refused to take it. They re it was positive, right, feedback to, to highlight the qualities that I saw in them and they just kept refusing to take it. And I could feel that that was actually not very kind to me because I had this energy that wanted to flow to them and give them a gift and they were blocking it. And then I realized, wow, it's really kind to others to receive their gifts, to receive their kindness, to receive their praise. Because we want to share positivity, right? People want to help others to feel good. And um, sometimes, yeah, that can be helpful, you know, not to make you feel guilty if you can't, but it can be helpful to think, oh, well, I can't do it for myself, but I can do it for them. And then bit by bit, you can soften towards yourself because you realize, well, if someone else thinks I'm worthy of kindness, then surely they can't be wrong. Not everyone can be wrong, right? These are wise people. So bit by bit, we learn to receive that kindness. And you already are because you're coming to the metta and, uh, you know, you know that it's a beautiful thing to do. So don't worry about that. Uh, it's not an overnight thing. You'll see it sometimes more than other times and maybe it depends what's going on in your life as well. Uh, anything else? Shirley had her hand up, didn't you? Can you unmute or have I not given you the signal yet? Hi. Um, oh, oh, I have unmuted, yes. Um, yeah, I don't know whether... I know that little chant ends with a little reflection on karma, if I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that in another chant that that's sort of related to equanimity. Uh -huh. But I've been trying to develop kindness to the perpetrators of evil in the world. Yeah. And when there's war and people are dying in the state of killing with the hearts full of hatred. And I think I reflect on karma. I just find that so painful. I don't feel equ equ equanimity. Yeah. So I just try and open up to that sadness, really. Yeah. But it just, it just interests me that that's, you know, how can one be equanimous when people see that, you know, digging a big pit for themselves? Right, right, right. And I mean, I, you know, I can see, you know, I can see that I dig, still dig big pits for myself, but I've got the Dhamma to reflect that sort of, yeah. and good spiritual friends, but people who are mixing all the time with hateful people, it's just, yeah. when you're in a meta room like this with good people and you're feeling so fortunate, it's just... And then you sort of think, well, can we invite these people into the pagoda? Oh, no, I don't want them in the pagoda. Yeah, yeah. Then you, sort of, then you sort of think, poor things. Sometimes you just think, poor things. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 And, and I put my, and I thought that's, you know, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. It's a very interesting theme. And it's one we actually discussed here a couple of days ago, something very similar about um, the difference between metta and equanimity and, um, in a sense, how they're related. And I do think the equanimity is the fourth of the Brahma Viharas for a reason, um, because it's a more exalted state. And also it includes the previous three. So it's almost the outcome of having already developed as much metta and compassion and mudita as you possibly can. And knowing that even when we do that, sometimes as we can't, that isn't enough to change the situation. And that is why when we can reflect on karma, that, you know, all beings suffer for their karma, it doesn't mean we just drop it. We just kind of have this aloof attitude. Well, there's nothing I can do, so I'll just let them suffer for their karma. You know, I'm okay because I'm wise. <laughs> I mean, none of us here think that. But I think um, equanimity is not aloof, actually. It comes through having connected and then having understood how to hold this in perspective with perspective that no matter what we do in life there's still going to be suffering there's still going to be people who are influenced wrongly and who do perpetrate terribly unskillful and and violent deeds on others um but that doesn't stop us from developing metta and compassion and sometimes we need to develop mudita as well to to 
to balance our view of what's happening in the world because there's a lot of beautiful things happening. Even our estate agent the other day, who's obviously trying to get money out of us with the property sale, was saying, oh, you know, it's never put in the newspaper, is it, that all these people are trying to offer loans to the project and people come and meditate and spread loving kindness. That's not in the newspaper, is it? Only the violence is there. And that's so true, you know, everybody can notice that. So I think it's so important to refresh our minds by the practice of mudita as well. And, you know, one way to do that is join communities like this and recognize that, yeah, we all suffer. We all have the uh, possibility to be involved with the wrong people and go on a wrong path in life. But at this moment, we're on the right path and we can try to use some of that good fortune to um, to help others. But yeah. There's only so much we can really do. And this is, for me, the reason I um, realise that ending samsara is the most harmless thing in the end we can possibly do. We take people along the way with us. We try to, you know, encourage other people along the way. But as long as there's life, there's going to be suffering. Someone says we should start a meta newspaper. That's great, isn't it? The sad thing is they don't sell, it seems. But I, I think that's a great idea. Please go ahead <laughs> and we'll all give you little articles to add to it. Louise. Thank you. Thank you for a lovely meditation. Um, what do you want to say now? I question I've had is there's almost meta meditation. And is there a kind of sequence in terms of practicing the 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 full Brahma Viharas? Right. This is, it seems to be less emphasis on on mudita and and and, and is the it's, it's always meta um, right right yeah yeah i mean i do also do a bit of compassion meditation and sometimes mudita but it seems to me that they are sequential in terms of their difficulty meta is a more friendly attitude an attitude of generalized goodwill to all beings no matter what and it tends to have that universality about it that makes it instantly pleasant and quite easy to spread. It's a good one to get grounded in. And it's it's part of all of the others. So it's almost like metta is love, unconditional love, benevolence, goodwill. And compassion is that same love, but directed to those who are suffering. So without having developed the metta in the first place, it would be very hard to have compassion that's genuinely loving but just tweaked in if you like and, and adapted to people who are suffering otherwise it's going to get very heavy quite quickly and it might not really be founded on strong enough meta meta is very resourcing for the mind so the way i've experienced this in the past was on a, a retreat where i was doing a lot of meta practice and then I didn't even change to compassion practice. It was just that the object was slightly different. So I took a person who maybe had suffered more in their life without really thinking that intellectually. They just came to mind. And the whole sort of sense of meta changed into something that I could recognize and understand was compassion. So it was almost like an innate wisdom in the meta itself that it will adapt to the situation. And in a way, the mudita is, is meta when it comes in contact with people who are doing well. There's a rejoicing energy to it. It's a bit more bubbly. It's a bit more celebratory, perhaps. Um, so I think they almost naturally lead on from each other. But it is probably good to have a foundation in the meta and then practice a few of the others as well from time to time. I think that is, is important. One of the ways that we do mudita quite regularly is through things like chaganusati, which is reflecting on one's own virtue, one's own goodness, things that you've done that have had beneficial effects for you and others. That's a kind of celebratory thing, like recognizing, yeah, there's goodness in my life, there's goodness in my heart. Um, I think she might have dropped out actually, but I'll carry on. Um, and, and getting that sense of joy coming up. So Medita is particularly um, joyful but it's a little bit harder to practice towards others because of our tendencies for competition and jealousy and resentment. So Medita is considered a, a, a kind of more advanced practice, if you like. So I think it is good to practice all of them from time to time, but meta, without meta, the others are going to be very limited. Yeah. Yeah. Meta has that um, boundless nature. 
and the others are a little bit more limited to the the suffering in the world or the happiness in the world and then equanimity i think is just a perspective that the mind takes on things when it's seen the fact that there are people who suffer there are people who are happy there are people who do skillful and unskillful things and and having that perspective that there's basically we are owners of our kama in a conventional sense um I once asked Ajahn about that because it's like, how can you own anything? I mean, if there's no self. And he said, yeah, that's for putta janas, that's for non areas. Uh, basically, we say that conventionally that you own your karma and that you're going to reap the results, but there is a way to even transcend that too. So. And that is through right view. Okay. <laughs> Any quick last comment, it is just after 10, so I'm aware that people, including myself and my guests, have things to do. Uh, anything else before we end? All right, oh, something from Joseph, a couple more sex. Michelle also wants to say a few words. Hey, Venerable, I'm just oh. calling from Canada, I just wanted to express my gratitude for your metta practice. It's been very inspiring. Um, I just wanted to, uh, would you say gratitude is also a form of mudita or would that be a different kind of feeling? I do think it's very related. Gratitude and mudita is the question for Louise because I know you disappeared for a second. Um, I do think that gratitude is very much related to mudita for oneself, especially. Um, it can be related to medita for others too, although it's more rejoicing in another's success and happiness. Um, but they're very intertwined. Gratitude is also a very um, powerful aspect of metta. Like it's so easy to have loving kindness towards those we're grateful toward, who've really um, shown us, taught us love, or, or taught us acceptance, or you know, being good spiritual friends. That's why we start usually with a loved person because it's someone we do have that natural sense of gratefulness towards. So all these qualities are sort of interrelated and mutually deepening and strengthening, I think. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to bid you goodbye for now. I'm not sure when the next meta session is, uh shell do you have any of this information at hand no okay because i'm teaching a meta retreat in devon it's only a small one unfortunately um where we really get into it by going through the different categories of being and practicing lots and lots of meta um so i guess the next meta session will be coming in december yeah because next week i'll probably be traveling so probably around mid-december uh Anything else to say? Did you want to say anything, Shell? Or maybe thank you everyone for joining us today. So, um, in the spirit of Dana and generosity, um, Venerable Chanda has freely given these wonderful teachings of Metta to us. Um, and if you are able to, we're asking for your donations to support our new camper and the really exciting project of purchasing a new uh, monastery we found a place that we are very close to putting an offer into and every penny is really counting towards this so if you are able to donate however small or big uh, please click on the link in the chat we're also asking for some support with things like weekly food shops um and um, uh, one sec i'm trying to type while i'm speaking to weekly food shops um and dana you're able to offer dana from afar um you can order it for the night before and it can be reheated by the guests at the bihara um or if you are in the uk and wish to offer dana please drop an email to uh, team at anucamperproject.org thank you matthias <laughs> that's in the chat as well um and there's lots of other ways to support the bihara too so please do have a look on the website We've also uh, got many events coming up. Venerable Chand is going to be teaching quite a lot next year. So please have a look on the events page on the website for some wonderful day retreats uh, and also residential retreats in the UK, the US and Norway. 
um, and Venerable will be sending out a newsletter shortly with some more information. And all of, as she said, all of Ajahn Brahm's uh, videos from the tour are coming soon and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So please do subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get the alerts as they come through. Oh yeah, that's also important for apparently um, spreading out the teachings further. Like the more people that subscribe, the more um, our channel comes up. I don't know. So that's another way that we can uh, forward the project. And Joseph has his hand up again. Do you want to say uh, one more thing? Yeah, th th thank you for your patience. I literally just woke up. Uh, I, f I forgot what I w wanted to originally ask you. Can I try again, please? Sure, please. Um, if we have, a, that's okay as well. Yeah, if we have, if we have a lot of gratefulness for like say our teachers like Ajahn Brahm, yeah. or you, and but we don't have the chance to see them or thank thank them personally, how best can we repay their kindness? Like, is there something I can remember if I don't have the opportunity to thank Ajahn Brahm personally? Yeah. What would he appreciate the most in terms of practicing? He would just appreciate you to put those practices into. Uh... Practice. <laughs> uh, he always says the best way to repair teachers through the practice, through actually trying to um, uh, understand the Dhamma. Yeah, through taking it on and, and trying to embody some of those qualities that he's shared with you, whatever means the most to you, and take that forward. So he always says, don't pay it back to me, pay it on, so to speak. Mm. So no matter what you say to Ajahn, no matter how much praise, how many tears you're crying with gratitude, he'll be just like, well, yeah, you know, it's just my teachers and their teachers. And <laughs> you can see there's no one it's coming from. Because I really try to give you, yeah, you know, I'm like so overwhelmed with gratitude often. And he just says, yeah, you know, just keep practicing. So my gratitude is this project. That's how I so-called repay it. But I know that even more than that, yeah, it's spreading it because it's spreading Dhamma to, to more people because I've had opportunities others haven't. Um, but it's also uh, practicing, basically, and getting enlightened. Yeah, that's the way. Don't ever fall off the path. Really hold it as something very, very precious. In the text, I think it says, you know, Silo it should be held above the head like jewels. It's so precious. I mean, the areas, they wouldn't break it for their life life you know they wouldn't kill they wouldn't steal they wouldn't even tell a deliberate lie uh, even at the risk of their life so these things are incredibly precious we can't fathom it really but it's all related to that question on camera again you know if we just keep on doing the right thing keep on doing good even if we're not experiencing the results yet we can have that trust that they will bear fruit so yeah that's the best <laughs> All right, so we're going to unmute all of you now so you can wave goodbye and uh, it's always nice to hear your voices. <laughs>